Another batch of three Rafale fighter jets have landed at the Ambala Air Base last night, which have taken the total number of Rafale fighters in the Indian Air Force inventory to 23. Four Rafales were supposed to take off from the French Air Base on 20 May, but only three Rafales could take off, because the A330 mid-air refuelers of the United Arab Emirates were undergoing maintenance. With this delivery, the Indian Air Force is all set to resurrect the second Rafale squadron with five Rafale fighters at the Hasimara Air Base in West Bengal, while the full deliveries of 36 Rafale fighters will be completed before April 2022. As India is likely to order more fighters under the MMRCA program, the French engine manufacturer Safran has recently conveyed the offer for the joint development of a 100 kN thrust class aircraft engine and also share the hot engine technology to India, along with the joint development and production of 1000 kg extended range capability hammer system with laser guidance technology under the Make in India model. The U.S. Air Force's upcoming long-range heavy payload stealth intercontinental strategic bomber B-21 radar is expected to enter service by 2026, and the Chinese Air Force is also secretly working on a new generation H-20 subsonic stealth bomber, while Russia is developing the next generation Pactus stealth bomber. The Indian Navy's plan to lease four Russian Tu-22ME aircraft for maritime operations in the 90s didn't materialize mainly due to the high operational cost of the platform. The DRDO will conduct the first flight of the one-ton class Swift UCAF in mid-2021, that will be used as a technology demonstrator for the 15-ton Aura unmanned combat aerial vehicle program, that will enter production in 2030. It is unlikely that India will be able to get hands on a stealth bomber from foreign countries, and the successful completion of the ORA program can give the designers, engineers and local industry a foundation stone for the development of 100,000 kg maximum takeoff weight long-range stealth bombers after 2030. The Indian Ministry of Defence will issue the second negative defence import list next week, and the entire focus is on the 155mm 52 caliber towed artillery gun this time. The Athos artillery gun of Israel's Elbit system had emerged as the winner in Indian Army's towed artillery gun competition, and the deal included delivery of first 400 units in fully built or knockdown condition and indigenous production of the remaining 1,180 units by Ordnance Factory Board under a full transfer of technology process with at least 50% indigenization, but the Israeli firm Elbit Systems had offered to build the Athos towed artillery guns with 70% indigenization from the first unit, and has also agreed to transfer the full technology and design to Bharat Forge an Ordnance Factory Board that will enable mass production of the Athos gun for both local as well as global market. While the Defence Ministry had included the 155mm artillery gun in the first negative list in August 2020, and the ban was to start from December 2020, but the date was subsequently changed to December 2021, as the indigenous advanced towed artillery gun system will conduct its final summer trials next month. Indian consumer and capital goods manufacturer Zetwork has established a fully owned subsidiary Zetwork Aerospace to manufacture satellites composite products and rocket casings for the Indian defence sector, and it also plans to manufacture aircraft components for foreign companies, for which it has already raised $120 million funding from a US-based firm. It has also formed a joint venture company Zetwork Kinetics Technologies Private Limited which will develop and build unmanned aerial vehicles. Sri Lanka has not responded to the Pakistani offer to use a $50 million line of credit for defence purchases that was extended during recent visit of the Pakistani Prime Minister earlier this year. 
Sri Lanka had also backed away from buying JF-17 fighter jets in 2016, as the Sri Lankan armed forces had faced several problems in the past with Pakistan-supplied equipments, and once out of the 500 fuses supplied by Pakistan, around 200 fuses were found to be faulty.